Good morning, everybody, and welcome, welcome to Working Horses with Jim. Today, I wanted to show you um, a project that I'm doing, uh, mostly down at the sawmill, of a possible um, siding that a lot of you guys probably have never seen before. And so I'm gonna show you that. But before we get down to the sawmill, we have a little logging to do. We get a few more logs for this particular job. Brenda's here to help me if she can handle the bugs. Yikes, they're bad. So anyways, they are, um, they're, they're a little thick this morning, but that's okay. Uh, we get used to them after a while. Uh, luckily, it's a quite a cool morning, so they're not as bad as they would be later on in the day. I've only got a little bit of time here that I need to cut, and I'm gonna cut um, and skid some logs. I have Baron and Bill, and they're doing good this morning, even though they've, this is like a fourth, they've had four days off. But anyways, that's okay. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this lot as we get along and we'll go cut a tree. So this is a, one of many plantations that we own on this piece of property. This is a property about uh, uh, two miles from our, our farm, maybe a mile and a half, whatever. And uh, it's a pretty good sized piece of property. And the previous owner planted a whole bunch of um, different species here on fields that they weren't using anymore. And so, uh, or pastures, I'm not sure exactly. There's a lot of rocks in here, so I doubt they're actual fields that they worked. It's probably just pasture land. So they planted a whole bunch of trees, um, mostly white pine, white pine, red pine, scotch pine, and tamarack. This particular plantation is probably the smallest one I have, but it's also the highest and driest one that I have. So it's really um, nice to be able to work on when it is early spring when it's wet. I can get on this piece of property about any time. So I have over the years, because I needed wood for my sawmill, I've come in and cut on this plantation and I've thinned it out tremendously. Um, and I'm at the point now where I've, most of the trees that are here are good trees. So I'm actually cutting more for my markets, more for my customers than I actually am for the, the welfare of the, the forest, I guess you could say. And yet, that's not true either because what I'm doing right now, since I need some more wood for this particular order, I am coming up into the very back of this plantation. I'm actually, cut, actually cutting it very, very heavy to make almost a clear cut patch. So when I get done here, I'm gonna have, a, a, I don't know, maybe a half an acre of almost nothing here. And I, that seems to have worked pretty good for me over the years. Because what happens in those cleared spots in a bunch of pine like this, the um, new saplings have a spot where they can really get started and the, the trees that are standing throw their seeds in such a way they actually start growing in these clearings. So I really kind of like to do that. So it actually is really good for the forest in the way I do it. But it's also, it's more for the fact that I have customers that need particular orders and that's why I quite often would come up in this particular spot um, in the spring of the year to be working on that. So anyways we'll cut a tree and get skidding some logs.
A lot of the trees up in here are a little bit on the crooked side, so it's a little bit difficult making nice straight logs. And as the old saying goes, it's hard to make straight lumber out of, out of crooked logs. And so what I've been doing lately is a lot of my um, crookeder stuff that uh, I just don't want to put through the mill, I've still been taking it down to my place and I've been burning quite a lot of it. And it, it works fine. Um, if, I, if this is a nice straight top, which it is not, I would just take that top out for firewood, but I'm not going to today. Um, a couple of these logs I just cut right now are a, a kind of crooked eight footers, but uh, I can still have, by having my own sawmill, I do have a lot of markets for a lot of different things, which allows me to, to utilize some poor wood actually that's not even, uh, could not even be sold on the, on the regular markets, um, except for pulp markets. And uh, so I do utilize a lot of the stuff um, so in this particular log, there's just that one sixteen footer at the butt that will be good for this order. So the crooked logs, what do you use them for? Well, you mean the really crooked ones? Yeah, like... Well, if they're really crooked, I just put them into the outdoor furnace and burn No, them. but I mean... A good size Adirondack siding. Sometimes I use them for Adirondack siding. Um, sometimes they're still okay for boarding. It just depends on how crooked they are. And the bigger they are, the less problem there'll be as far as when they're crooked. Okay, let me cut this in half and we'll get to working. Oh good, I thought you were gonna make them pull the whole thing at once. No, nope, not today.
Not no problem. At some point, maybe I can show you what I'm trying to teach Baron at this stage in his training. Um, uh, but let's, I gotta get these logs off my laning, piled up a little bit before I can, oh, before I can bring more in. One thing I really like to do with a young colt, <coughs> and especially Baron, he's just a, um, he stands pretty good, he really does. But uh, when he is hitched by the halter like this and has a hitch behind him, it just makes him teach him how to stand even better because it's not easy to go ahead and because of both the rope and the log. And same with backwards, he can only back up just a few inches and he hits the log. So it just teaches him to give up the fighting and just to stand still. I've come to the conclusion um, that Baron's going to be a good woods horse. Do you know why I have that conclusion? Why? Because he likes leaves? One of the biggest things a woods horse needs to know how to do is eat leaves. <clears throat> just, it, <laughs> it, just, it just keeps him content throughout the day as he's logging. He can go along and grab a mouthful of leaves and Baron is very good at it. Well, uh, let me just ask you, have you ever had a horse that you've brought to the woods that didn't learn to eat leaves? No. <laughs> he likes those beach leaves. These leaves are so pretty. They're just all so brand new. Fresh and shiny and green. It's lovely to be in the woods right now. It's always lovely to be in the woods.
So we're missing our audios today so I can't talk as much as I, I would like to share some of the things but with with Baron um, when he's pulling uh, of course he has had four days off but still I was getting him pretty good earlier when I was doing a little bit more logging with him but he tends to uh, what I call crow hop type of thing when he starts off a load and, and he wants to pull two legs at a time type of thing and uh, what I want him to do is get down to just pulling one leg at a time just one you know just at a walk and not a hop so that's something i'm working on um i have been taking him for longer stretches um so that he gets tired of the crow hopping and starts to walk like he should if i just go short stretches he'll try to crow hop every time and i want to get him over that so i'll try to show you what i mean he may or may not do it as we start through Of course, since I wanted him to, he's not doing it. He's walking really good the way I'd like him to walk. But if you go back early in this video, you can see him um, going two legs at a time, crow hopping. The tongs seem to be working so nice today. How come you um, chose tongs right now instead of chain putting a chain around them the log was laying flat on the ground and it would have been a little bit harder to get the chain on as opposed to throwing the tongs down and going so okay. you just look at the log and then decide what to do yes. uh, uh. Also, there seemed to be some sort of a weird noise today. Is that because you were using the tongs or some kind of weird, you know, like chain noise or something? Well, maybe when you're editing, you can hear it and you'll hear it too. Just unusual. That could be. All right, now we'll cut another tree. And we'll continue on.
Love you guys. I'll see you later. Back at the farm. Baron and Ken and Jim are going up to the woods to bring home a load of logs. the return trip with a load of logs. Well, good evening. This has been a good day. I was able to get a little bit logging done this morning and then we got one load of uh, logs home for this siding that I'm dealing with. And we actually went out this afternoon and did a little bit more disking with the horses. But I want to show you what I'm doing in the sawmill with this product that I'm making for a customer. This is tapered Adirondack siding. And this is just a pile of what we have so far. These are all 16 foot long logs. There's five packs in here. And I will go, we can go into the sawmill and I'll explain a little bit more about it. But as you can see, it's tapered. It's this thick here and it goes right down to nothing on this side. So it tapers off to nothing. So let's go into the sawmill and I'll explain a little bit more about what we're doing. I'm assuming there's a lot of people around the world that don't, under, don't even know what Adirondack siding is. So I want to show you some regular Adirondack siding that I put up on the wall years ago just so people can see it to get an idea what Adirondack siding is. This particular stuff is just wood that is, has one live edge and it's three quarter inches thick all the way from side to side. It's not tapered, it's just a solid regular, what I call regular Adirondack siding. As you can see, this is kind of a rough cut wood and it takes, it's quite an art to put it up on the wall uh, or on, the, on your siding for your house. It's pretty common around here we live just north of the Adirondacks, of course, and so that's where the bulk of it is actually used up in the Adirondacks. And it's just a kind of a rustic looking siding, but uh, it's known, um, a lot of people have it in this area. Some people call it brainstorming, but I've always called it Adirondack siding. But let me show you a little bit more on the siding that we're taking, doing today, which is tapered Adirondack siding, and then how I saw it. It is a very windy night, and so my door keeps slamming on me. It'd be nice to open the door so you could see actually better, but it, when the door comes open, the wind blows through this building terrible, so I'm gonna keep it shut. Here is another pack of Adirondack siding that's all finished. Um, as you can see, I actually will take baler twine around the outside edges because this is so long so that when I pick it up with my forks, it kind of holds the outside edges together and otherwise the stickers would fall right out. But what I do when I'm stick stickering up, I will put three stickers in it. These are 16 footers. And then the, the thick end edge is on the outside and then the thin edge is in the center. And that just allows the air to flow through there and dry before the product is put up on buildings. As you can see, some of this 
is quite wide. Um, you know, it's hard to get exactly the right size that people want because all logs vary in size. So some of it is wider than others, but it makes beautiful siding and it actually goes up quite fast, this wide stuff like this, because it just covers a lot of area. So here's a log that I've already started and I actually cut, I have one, my bottom side, I cut two pieces off there, the slab piece and then one more board. And the same with up top here, I cut the slab piece off and one board. And so now it's, we're ready to make the tapered siding. So as I saw, I'll try to explain what I'm doing. Here I am making my setup for my first cut. I have to lift the edge of the log up with my clamp and then I put those two boards underneath the edge to make it tapered on my first cut. As you can see, here's our first tapered side and cut. What I try to do is drag all the boards backwards to me and that works good, but each time I turn the log, the taper is in a different spot on the piece. And so this way, the taper is such that it just, my board return has a difficult time dragging it back because there's so little wood there to grab. So I have to be very careful. So now I lift the clamp up and walk over and pull the boards out from underneath the log and then come back, lower the clamp so the log is laying flat on the bed and actually drop it an inch and a sixteenth to make my next cut. As I'm cutting through it, I'll hit my set works to tell the mill that my next cut will be a quarter of an inch thick or drop it another quarter of an inch so that when I pick it back up again it will work right. So I'm jumping back and forth between an inch and a sixteenth and a quarter of an inch. It takes an awful lot of walking doing this the way I do it. And if I had help here, it would help out considerably. And Brenda would be willing to help sometimes. But on these 16 foot logs, it's very difficult to handle the wood. As you see right here, I have to support this 16-foot board as it comes through and be very careful because it's actually um, thin enough that if I'm not careful, it will actually snap right in half. So that's what the difficulty is in handling this wood, to support it in the right places at the right times. I have on this sawmill what they call the simple set set works and without that it'd be really really hard to make this type of pattern and exciting because you've got to watch the scale board and make all these different strange cuts inch and a sixteenth and a quarter and so it would be very hard to 
by watching the scale board manually put it down to the spot where you need to have it. A couple of times now I was coming to the very end of this cut when the taper is the wrong way and I backed up before my blade was completely disengaged and the board return wasn't able to grab the board because there just wasn't enough wood there and it came back and the blade hit the board and took the blade right off the wheels and ruined the blade so I've got to be very careful to make sure that the blade is disengaged before I back it up. When I first started doing this, I was trying to sticker my boards up as I sawed, but I just don't have a lot of room in here for 16 foot stuff, so I had to go so much farther beyond my pile to sticker it up. So it just ended up working better to just put them in a stack like this and then stop the sawmill and sticker them up later on, and uh, that just worked better. So as you get closer to the bed of the sawmill as you're making this tapered siding, it gets a little bit more tricky. When I first started my cut in the log, it's just at a random dimension. I don't do it in such a way that I end up at something specific. So you never know where you're going to end up on the log when you get closer to the bed. A lot of times I will try to end up at one inch and if it comes out 
right? That's what I do. And, but a lot of times it might end up at inch and a half or something like that. So my last inch board, I'll have to make another cut to throw away that half an inch to end up with an inch board. Being that it's tapered like this all the way down through, you just can't go that close to the deck without having a triangle or piece of wood being last. So you just have to plan it the best you can. As it turned out on this particular log, it came out pretty well exactly. My very last piece that was tapered ended up with a inch board directly underneath it. So that worked out good, but it doesn't usually work out that way. So here's that inch board that I'm putting over on the wagon that will end up going through the edger to cut the edges off to make it a good, probably a one by eight board. Okay, so there you have it, Adirondack, uh, tapered Adirondack siding. I, as you can see, that was pretty well just one log. And when that's laid out and you have a, an, on your narrow, your thin side, if you have an overlap of three or four inches, you can just imagine how much coverage that one pile right there will do on a wall on somebody's house. So, hope you enjoyed this video. You guys have a great day.